Trojan Felly, Trojan Felly, what's up, man? You, S, C, J here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, I hope everybody is getting ready to get up, get out, and make some things happen this morning. Listen, we got a couple of things we got to talk about. Um, this past weekend went very, very well um, for the USC football Trojans. We want to talk about that, and we want to talk about where they at as far as uh, numbers wise, as far as the draft. You know, how did they come out as far as the team? They had uh, uh, seven players, man, to get drafted in. And I will say that's a great number. And we're going to show you guys the other teams that they fell right there with. But USC sitting up there at the top. And uh, for this to be somewhat of a down year, I think it's really speaking values of what USC and Lincoln Riley is able to do this year on a so-called down year. We'll get we'll deal with that in a second. But we want to talk about a big guy by the name of Derek Harmon, um, giving you an update on him. You guys know. He is a, a big time defensive lineman, 6'5, 320 pounds. You guys know I did a video about him making a visit and also gave you guys a little bit of an update as far as the YouTube short. And uh, one of the things I, I mentioned in that was that after he left USC, that he was supposed to be going to Miami and Colorado. Well, there was a small development that took place, got the word yesterday. And apparently he canceled the the Miami trip. Now we could take it as this: the Colorado trip went extremely well, and he felt like canceling that. Or we could take it as he's deciding between the two, which I heard that is possibly deciding between the two. Now you guys know I do record every every day the night before. You know I do have a job, I work, so I try to get this information out to you guys and upload it in my YouTube. The night before it comes out, three o'clock West Coast time, um, six six a.m. East Coast time. Every pretty much every day. Sometimes my schedule kind of changes, but pretty much every, every day that's what it is. So, um, from my understanding, is that it's between USC and Colorado. It sounds like you know, uh, you know, I heard that Eric Henderson got a, a, another opportunity to talk to him again. Um, I think since he's been to Colorado. So let's just wait and see. Let's see what ha happens, you know, more, more than anything right now. I mean, USC, you know, you put him next to Bear. I, I think it's going to be straight up go time. So remember what I told you at the time I'm recording this, um, no announcement has been made. If it's an announcement made, I guess I'll just have a video. But uh, you guys already know where you can find me. It's going to be USCJ32 on Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. Now, we got to talk about the draft. And one of the things I said, I mentioned, I put up a little, uh, a, a kind of a post. It talked about how impressive this was. And they said that this was an 8-5 season. Uh, yes, it was an 8-5 season. But then we went out and beat a top 15 team in Louisville, had the top 16, team, 16 total defense in the country. Um, and, and, and we were able to move and groove and for, for a year to be as, as, um, as I guess, I'm not gonna say unimpressive to our standards. Yes. It's unimpressive, uh, eight and five season, but at the end of the day, we did get eight wins. We have five, five losses and we finished strong. But when you look at the teams that we're in, in the mix with, as far as who had the most impressive draft, uh, we'll take a look at this information real quick. And I want you guys to to see exactly what I'm talking about here. Let me just pull this up. Okay, here it is right here. This is uh, from the draft. Who had the most picks uh, for the 2024, the 2024 draft? And you see it here. Uh, USC right there is at number se at, at seven picks yesterday. And you see Notre Dame at seven, Penn State at eight, Georgia eight, and then Oregon eight. Out of all these teams, and you see here, Washington 10, Florida State 10, Alabama 10, Texas 10, and uh, 11, excuse me. And then um, you had Michigan with 13. They had the most. But all of these teams, uh, you know, it really says, it speaks a whole lot of values. And, and the reason why is because USC, um, they had a loss like that and was still, you know, losses like that and was still able to move and groove. And you see the first one that USC was able to get here. You see Todd Washington drafted in the seventh round, 245, 241 pick, and he went to the Miami Dolphins. I think he's going to be a great, great um, addition to that team, and uh, and it's going to go well. 
Um, also, we got a guy like Solomon Bird, who I was very high on. You see, he was drafted in the seventh round as well, and he was drafted uh, pick number 230. So Solomon Bird, big shout out to him, and I love what he's able to do on that defensive end, <coughs> excuse me, slash edge position. Then you got Brandon Rice, who was also drafted in the sixth round, and he went number 225 overall. And so, you know, hey, we know what it is. Brandon Rice is going to be staying, playing for the Chargers, and uh, you know what he can do. Big physical receiver and able to move and groove. And, of course, you guys, this is no surprise to me because I know when he was at Washington State, he was good. Jerry Kingston came from Washington State, <coughs> excuse me, then went to USC, number uh, in the sixth round, pick number 215, and he went to San Francisco 49ers. So, I'm very excited about that pick as well. And I'm excited about the fact that he was able to move and groove and get, you know, find himself a home as well. Um, so you guys can hit me in the comments. You guys can tell me what you think. I think Jared Kingston is going to be a great player. He was good at Washington State. For whatever reason, our offensive line did not gel the way it needed to gel. Um, you know, this one right here was a big time one, you know, because, uh, you know, this, uh, this commitment, you know, I saw it live. And boy, that thing had me really misty eye when I saw Kalen Bullock and his mom crying on his uh his shoulder. You see, he went to the Houston Texans at 149 pick overall. And then uh he was uh yeah, uh in the third round. And so that was a big time pickup. And then of course, you guys know uh Caleb Williams is the one of the, the most dominant players to ever come to USC, pick number one in the first round. And uh, we're going to miss Caleb. We're going to miss all these guys, man. So you guys can hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think. USC had seven guys drafted. We did have a couple of guys that went undrafted. And we'll talk about those guys as well. And the only guy that I don't see that signed any type of deal was Shane Lee out of everybody, um, you know, that was available. So you guys can hit me in the comments on that. You guys can tell me what you think. But the first one is Justin Dietrich. Um, he signed an undrafted free agent deal with the Rams. So he'll be staying in L.A., um, and that's good for him. You know, he doesn't have to do any major traveling. He could just, you know, go, you know, it's go time with him. Go ahead and get prepared. Do what you got to do. And uh, you're right across the street, essentially. And, and Roland Wallace deal was kind of unique because he actually signed a deal with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. And I, I can't believe he got drafted, but his he has a guarantee $150,000. None of those guys that, from what I saw, had a guarantee like Roland Wallace. So that lets you know that, uh, you know, that team really realizes that he should have got drafted. But for whatever reason, it, it didn't happen. And, of course, Austin Jones, he uh, went to the Washington Redskins as an undrafted free, free agent as well. So I'm very excited about Austin Jones as well, man. So you guys can drop those comments, man, in the comment section and tell me what you think. And then you had the uh, Keon Bars who got picked up by the Tennessee Titans. So, you know, for this team to this team to to have a season like the way it did and to really to really, you know, feel like we were somewhat lost in the sauce. I know it didn't feel good the 8 and 5 season. It, it just felt like USC had all this talent which we all knew. We we knew that we had this talent. I wasn't just coming in, in in the beginning of the season and pumping up these players just to pump them up. These are good players, and the NFL recognizes that as well. And this is the proof is in the pudding. A lot of these guys wouldn't get picked up if they weren't good players. These guys have a real opportunity. Uh, do you know how many guys don't even get free agent, um, undrafted free agent contracts? A lot of people, but some of these guys, Austin Jones, Keon Bars, Roland Wallace, to me, that is an absolute crime. Um, I think Roland Wallace should, should really um, – he should have really been drafted, man. I think he was at least a fifth, fifth, fourth or fifth rounder. I mean, he's a physical style corner who I think can really get in there and play safety. You just look at his body. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, so you look, man, you guys hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think. And Lincoln Riley, look what he's done as a as a coach. Um, you know, to have seven players drafted uh, from this team, and then we but we right up there. I'm gonna show you guys this one more time with the upper echelon of talent, Michigan 13. Texas 11, Alabama 10, Florida State 10, Washington 10, and then you just look at the rest of it, USC is right there in the mix. And so that's saying a whole lot. They had this they had this list to come out of the top teams that had the most players, and USC was all the way in the mix. And you see Georgia right there 
at eight, Oregon eight, Penn State eight, seven Notre Dame. These were all the teams that were top top all year long in USC. So so it it this just lets you know that USC has all that talent on one team, but was unable to provide the same chemistry that we had last year. USC's team had way more chemistry last year. And as a result, we saw more success, even though we didn't capitalize on that success. Of course, our defensive coordinator, the defense was the Achilles heel. But now I believe that that we're going to move and groove to another direction, man. So you guys can drop those comments in the comment section. You guys can tell me what you think. Um, they, they, you know, it's some great news for, for the USC football family to, to really have something to look forward to um, this next year coming up. And listen, we got to get this defensive tackle, though. And so and one more thing, there is something I – there were a couple of people that were asking me about my son, and I wanted to show you guys that. They wanted to know, uh, you know, where was my son at? This is him right here. His his name is Jaden, but he's a six-foot-one. He's a six-foot-one, 220-pound linebacker, and he's playing for Allen University. I don't know if you can see it. That's the jersey right there. Uh, when we He's not – he's actually in high school. Some didn't even know it. But they thought that he was playing in a spring game. But you know how you go to the school, you put the uniform on. Well, this was a past one. But you put the uniform on, that whole deal. We went to the spring game. But he graduates next month. And so he'll be enrolling. It's a Division II school. He'll be playing. He kind of got caught up. He, he Look, he's he could play Division I ball. I can guarantee you that. So hopefully he get everything straight here. Maybe. Who knows what happens? Who knows what happens? I'll just say that. Uh, but he's a good player, man. And uh, you guys remember, this was the picture I put up with him. So there was something that asked me about my son. Well, here it is, man. I love him. I love him like crazy. Um, he's my main guy. He's my workout partner. We do the whole thing together, man. So look, man, drop those comments in the comment section, man, as far as what USC has to come. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully let's keep our hands crossed, fingers crossed. Let's pray that USC gets this big time defensive lineman, man. Until later on. Oh, there is one more that we may possibly get. He's from his name is Suggs, last name Suggs, but um, he is a defensive lineman standing at six foot three, two hundred and ninety five pounds, and he goes to Grand Grand Valley Straight, Grand Valley State. So hopefully we'll see. He had he has a offer from USC. That's actually a Division two school, and but he's a monster. He's a monster. I meant to do a video on him, but you know. Uh, I got lost in the sauce over the weekend in the draft, but he has an offer. I talked to him, you know, hopefully everything goes well with that. Uh, we'll see what happens, but he's getting a lot of offers as well, though. So hit me in the comments. You guys let me know what you think. It's USCJ32 on Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. I'm out of here. Until later on, everybody stay blessed. Fight on, fight on, fight on.